But we got to get into it. Maryland comes into Spartan Stadium again, homecoming, and beat the Spartans 31 to 9. Notice, but it what the game was much closer than the score indicates. Yeah, man. I mean, we all know if you played the game of football and you book a homecoming, if you're the opponent coming into the homecoming weekend uh, on the road, you know, it's a little bit of disrespect. I feel like that's always been where, like, all right, of course they think they can line us up on the schedule and, and get an easy win. And that's not the case. Clearly the Big Ten is, is growing and it's more stronger uh, every year. But we knew what Maryland was, was was and who they were, you know, experiencing last year and what they did to us. And so uh, for, for this this game, I mean, you talked about it straight. It was closer because we had opportunities to – we had opportunities to compete in this game and also win this game. You know, think about all the things that, you know, once we got it going, you know, some of the drop passes from the receivers that were in the bread basket and it just wasn't going our way. Uh, but if you pull up those stats again, you know, with Noah Kim and, and, and who we had, you know, Kim's 18 for 32, 190 yards, but, you know, one TD with those two interceptions, man, like, you know, the one interception is really early on that drive where, you know, you, you just – kind of missed Trey Mosley on the timing standpoint because he was open in the beginning, but then you had a, a a linebacker safety, you know, come out of the blue, like right on the periphery where it was probably on a blind spot and get an interception. And so just the tie, we just couldn't get it going fully consecutively with the, the series, right? Like you had some good things happen and then it was so bad. Like it just never could be stacking up against the getting there. That fourth and one, one, that really like brought some bad PTSD from last year of like when you, you look when we're at the big house last year, we take a timeout and we proceed to not check out and, and run the wrong play. Um, and this one was like, man, I feel like if we didn't, if we knew we were going to get the push, we should have definitely put some boot action and let Noah run it in, you know, on a boot or something, use his arm, use his legs, get him outside. Cause we right then and there was like that opportunity to, respond to their drive and that touchdown right and we get stopped and it just kind of kept that whole game was like that where we did some good did some bad good bad and it just was bad outweighing the good and that's how it is i mean you, you brought it up you said you know the you know there were there were some moments in the game that were, were questionable and let's just call a spade a spade right there you're talking about the fourth and goal from the one michigan state opts not to just take the points which Look, you kind of love that aggressiveness. You know, I think in hindsight, you might say just kick the field goal, get the three points, get out of there. But if you are going to run that play, for all the young offensive coordinators out there and offensive play callers, one of the worst plays for the guys down in the front, the guys to, that block, are those long, wide plays outside. Outside, edge, outside zones, yeah. Just the toss, the outside zone. It's got to be a miss. If you're going wide, it's got to be a misdirection. Like I, we love that, like the boots and stuff that you brought up just now, or direct. I mean, I was we're talking with, with Lorenzo White and Ju as we we're coming out of the stadium, and they're, they're like, "You got, you got to go over the top." You know, like Lo, Lorenzo White, you got to get, you know, go right, put a foot down, get up, and get over the top, and use. You know, we don't have that big back right now that's healthy that can pound it up the middle. But I think you got, you know, Nate Carter, he just. You know, unless you have a canine type of back that's just blazing speed. I mean, he's documented in the four three range, right in the forty at the combine, and and he went scored two touchdowns again this week. We'll talk about that later on. But that kind of player, you got to be direct because that's what it's all yeah, about. Mono a mono, low man wins. You've seen that if you watched the Lions game last night, yesterday, you saw a lot of that. You know, those goal line situations. Uh, that's. That's the gripe. And there were plays, though. Let's get off of that. There were a lot of plays, Otis, that could have been made. If you look at the stat sheet, and I don't know if we have all the stats ready to go here, you know, for our, our main financial stat breakdown, but Michigan State outgains Maryland 376 yards of offense or 362. Maryland came in averaging well over 480 yards of offense. Tua, I mean, Tali Tungavailoa, Tua's little brother, Tua is the Miami – uh, Dolphin starting quarterback comes in averaging 375 yards through the air, only had about 170 uh, through the air against the Spartans. Yeah, man. And I think to the element of 
say for it, they, they, their or old coordinator took advantage of our young BBs um, from a standpoint of, you know, getting some trips, some, some uh, trips action. If you look at that one touchdown, um, you know, where it's, you got a, got a nickel and gross and Angelo. And then you got, you know, Mangum at the safety spot lined up on that third slot receiver. And just, I don't know if it's eyes or if it's getting over top, but, you know, you got to be able to look at those first two receivers running short routes. Like you look right here. Uh, yes, there's a long gap, you know, space between one, number one receiver and the two second, number two slot receiver. But from the instance, you know, you got gross out here that can get anything coming outside. And clearly he's already seven yards, five, six yards off the ball. So, you know, if you play this, you know, was there a reroute to slow that route down and to help Mangum to you know recognize that everything's short, this should be, a, this should easily be gross under Mangum over top because both receivers run five yard ends, digs, digs, right? Quick. That third receiver is the only threat. And to be over to be over top, if you're reading eyes on QB, reading that slot, those are the dream of a safety to go over top on that corner route and get an interception. And Rewind I think that one more time so we can play that. So people can yeah, see yeah. this one more time, slow it down a little bit so we can stop if that's possible here. We have the play. So you see the over route happen, right? You, you're, yeah, you're you see, look, you see number two, you see number, you see both receivers, outside receivers, trips left, technically trips right if you're in the defensive side, snaps the ball, goes down, both receivers immediately go in. And for when I'm in safety, I'm like, hey, those two receivers are in. I'm going to allow the linebackers to go ahead and carry that. We can live and fight another down. Um, and I know it's loading, but we can live and fight another down from the standpoint of those two receivers going in. My deepest threat, Coach D would always say, get deepest of the deepest. Clearly, we're already in the red zone. So I don't need to go back further. I need to be up my heels on number the 10, or heels on the goal line. So when it comes, I can determine the speed of the route. He hits that corner out. I'm right on top on the, the back shoulder. Angelo should be under, just ready to get either a PBU, pass breakup, or an interception. Uh, um, because if if I wish we'd have had the clip, because clearly that's on our fault, because we didn't give us timestamp and be able to cut these. So that's no knock on Tony O. But for, for us, if I'm looking at QB too, he he didn't look us off. He's looking right at him. Right, he's looking. Um, and so that's an element of we go, we'll learn, we'll get better, right? We'll learn, we'll get better. Um, and that's just the element of how that day went, where it was elements of when we could have got off the field, could at least force it to, to three points, you end up getting a touchdown, seven points, six points. So, um, so yeah, Coach B, you know, when you think, think about this, you know, Coach B, we talked about the quarterback, you know, debacle where Noel didn't get it fully going, and then you brought in Hauser and – you know, he had some goodness going, but then we're going to be driving in and it's a halfback screen and what happens? <laughs> Interception, right? And so we always talked about the, is it the timing? Is it the, the lineman selling the, the, the screen, or the, the running back? All three levels. I feel like there's just elements of just, it's not clicking right now. And so when it's not clicking right now, what do you do, Stray? Got to go back to the drawing board. We got to get back in there. We got to go like this. This game should should not set us back mentally. We have an opportunity to put a win on our win column, and we got to go back to the drawing board. And from a standpoint, these guys can't get down on themselves because we clearly could have won that game. And everybody yeah. here watching, if you're a football now, you know, bus, if you know you're in football, we could have easily won that game. Yeah, like there's there's no doubt about it. You know, looking at the effort in that game. I mean, so let me just be very clear. Like there's people out there chattering that, you know, there wasn't enough holes open and running the ball. That, that, that's false. That's fundamental. That is absolutely false. As you can say, run, rush the ball for over hundred yards in the game. Nate Carter had 19 carries for a net of 97 yards. He actually did gain 102 himself, but he had a, a loss of five, but look, look, the, there were holes there. There was protection for the quarterbacks. There was some timing issues as you were just describing, you know, that from the quarterback to the running backs are, you know, great passes and just did not catch the ball. And then there was other times, you know, I was at practice today. Their coach was like, look, we, we had about 42 points that just didn't get hit. They were right there from the offensive side and some pick sixes that were clear 
guys getting hit in the chest with balls and dropping them. You can't do that and win ball games. And then to add insult to injury, obviously the five turnovers they talk about, the five with the interceptions and the fumbles, but really they're six. And because there's a hidden turnover in the turnover on downs when it was fourth and goal and you yeah. don't get in, those are opportunities, especially in the red zone, that you just cannot not capitalize on. Uh, to win ball games, but I'm telling you, this team never quit. I did not see any of those signs, wh which you're, we're all looking for, right? We're looking for that with the outside noise that's going on in this program. That team played hard through the end of the ball game and the practice today. Otis, they were practicing their asses off. They were running to the ball. They were running in and out of the weave. There was a lot of noise because you know it's their first time going on the road. I, there's leadership on that staff. There's leadership inside that locker room as it stands. I just continue to pray for these guys to be able to show it and, and capitalize on these moments to get the first win they need after the, the, the news that they had to go through and endure. We got a Noah Kim touchdown. Do we have that ready to go? Just inside the nine yard line. 94 yards on the ground now for Nate Carter. Noah Kim takes the snap back. Play fakes to Carter. Throws right side of the end zone. Caught! For a touchdown, Tyrell Henry with a grab. Touchdown, MSU. That's pure execution there by the offense. When you look at Noah Kim, max protection. No pressure on Noah Kim. Just shuffles to the side on his right after a little play action play. Gets rid of the ball to a wide open Tyrell Henry. Hey, that was, hey, that was clutch. That was legit, <laughs> yo. Now, you look, know, I try to, you know, sometimes you don't hear me, but I'm cheering inside, right? Oh, I know you are. I know you're being composed <laughs> on the radio, which is crazy because no one's looking in besides this angle. But this is the same play that Maryland ran on us. Same exact play. Mm -hmm. Same exact play. Same route combination. Same route combination corner. Like, it's, it's, look, man, football ain't that hard, man, from a standpoint. And you, he threw a great ball. And Tyrell Henry, yeah. I'm looking to Tyrell Henry to get, get more, like, get more touch. Just get get him more out in space because he can, he can go, uh, and so let's 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 get it going, man. Like you yeah. saw, that's where it could be. That could be on a consistent basis. Is that.